This is the Porsche Boxster 987. It develops 240 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque. 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. Oh yes, it feels good to be back in a Porsche. People may know that I used to have an older Boxster, a 986, but I've gone for an upgrade. This is a 987. I'd forgotten how good these boxes are to drive. You really underestimate them. When you get in here, you just realize everything is just so well considered. We have a 2.7 litre flat six behind me and um, puts out quite a nice noise. Oh, I missed that growl. What makes it so good to drive is that all the controls just work exactly as you would like. The steering weight is a little bit heavy, but not too heavy. It gives you nice feedback on the road. And the pedals are really well weighted, especially the brake pedal, which isn't over assisted. It's nice and linear. So you want to brake a little bit, you can brake a little bit. If you want to brake a lot, you can brake a lot. I've gone for the manual. I used to have the uh, Tiptronic in my old 986 Boxster, but it's just a bit slow and I want to drive this on track occasionally and I just don't I just didn't get on with it and fitted to this car we have the optional six-speed gearbox which um, has a good feel I mean unlike other cars like the 350Z MX-5 the gear stick isn't directly connected to the transmission there's linkages but good feel nonetheless this is the second generation Boxster and everything's just been improved the interior is vastly improved and on the outside, they've also made a few visual tweaks as well to make it stand out from the uh, first generation. Mainly the controversial egg headlights have gone, replaced with much more traditional Porsche headlights than I much prefer. I'm lucky where I live, there's a lot of really great country roads like this one. And I have been able to drive a lot of newer modern cars by doing this channel, and I'm very grateful to that. But for the money I pay for this car, I don't think you could have a better driving experience. There's something just about the way it handles, and I'm really trying not to uh, talk in cliches here, but this car just makes you want to enjoy driving more. It just, it, it's just kind of inexplicable. It's the combination of every single aspect all adding up. You know, there's great feel, you can go quite fast, but you don't feel like you're out of control. Um, this gear selection is so good. Um, you've got that noise behind you just encouraging you and then keeping you going on and on and on. Um, and the brakes work well and it's just, it's just good. It's just really, really good. This is the 2.7 litre car, so it only has 240 horsepower, but and then you think, yeah, that's not a lot by today's standards. But it doesn't matter, it's kind of how the car makes you feel. And it's fast enough, this car is fast enough. And some cars just allow you to enjoy the simple pleasure of driving more than others. And, and this is one of them. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna do a few more laps in uh, my lovely country back roads. And then I'll pull over and tell you a bit more about the uh, optional features. Right, so now that we've calmed down a bit, let's talk about um, all the features and options that came on this car. Now it's very rare, in my experience, to find a Boxster with options on it because these are generally bought by people with not as much money as people who buy 911s and so there's not as much spare money to put options on it. Plus the base car is fine. Um, but this one has options, oh yeah. Firstly, the, probably the, the nicest one is the uh, PASM, or Porsche Active Stability Management, which is basically active damping. So there's a normal mode and a sport mode, and you've got electrically adjusted dampers, and they will react more firmly in the sport mode for when you're on the track, and less so 
uh, give a, com a softer ride in the normal mode. This car also has the optional 18 inch wheels, which uh, look amazing in my opinion. I think that's a really good choice for this car. Uh, giving you a nice big thick piece of rubber, 235 on the front, 265 on the back, so loads of grip. As I mentioned earlier, we have the optional six speed gearbox. The five speed came in the base model, so get the six speed is so nice, gives you a bit more um, flexibility and especially gives you that sixth gear for motorway cruising. And you have the Sport Chrono Pack, which gives you this lovely sports button down here, sports button down here, and a little clock up here. And it um, allows you to do little timings through the computer, um, but also when you push it, it will turn on the sport mode for the PASM suspension and makes the throttle response a little bit sharper. So this is the 2005 year 2.7 Boxster. And it's done 80,000 miles. Um, it obviously came with those options. And I got it for 6,750 quid, which I think is an absolute bargain for the amount of car you're getting for that money. And everything's fine on it, mostly. There are a few niggles, um, and it wouldn't be this channel if there weren't a few things to fix. Um, and I kind of like that. So now I'm going to go through my plans for this car. In my next video, I'll cover all the minor niggles and I'll go through what I'm going to repair. Then in the video after that, I'll get the car on the lift and I'll get under it and I'll take the sills off and all the covers and trays and the wheel arches and I'll give it a full Porsche inspection. I've got the checklist and I'll go through and do all their, their, their checks and stuff like that, check for any hidden issues. Um, you can get uh, problems with brake lines rusting with this car, so um, good, to, good to give that a good check, isn't it? I want to do full servicing, all the, all the fluids and all the bits that need changing. And then I'm just going to look at mods and upgrades I might do. So these are a list of things I may do to the car. The PASM dampers on this car, I've done 80,000 miles, still feel great, but you know, there are newer versions available. Would it be worth upgrading them? Plus you get different controllers for the PASM as well, which can make better use of the um, electronic damping as well. I want to get the steering wheel covered in Alcantara because I never have and I've always wanted to and so I am. Same with the gear knob, maybe the handbrake as well. Whilst the gear change is good, apparently there's a GT2 short shifter kit you can get for this, which um, would sharpen it up even more. So we'll look into that. So at the brakes, we go track it, need to change the brake pads, look at the discs, see how they're holding up. But I'll put, need to put a, a brake pad that can, that can take the heat a bit more. Um, this seat um, is all right. It's just not very supportive, really. Might need to change the tires. We've got different tires, got Bridgestones on the back and Michelin's on the front, uh, RE50s on the rear, which are like a standard tire for this car and they're terrible. The stereo is from 2005 and while still functions perfectly, can't plug my phone in. So I'd like to be able to play my tunes through my stereo from my phone. If money and time allows, get a bit more power out of the car, be nice. You know, you can do simple mods like changing the throttle, body, intakes, remaps, get a little bit out, see how expensive that would be. There is a full turbo kit available for this car. It's quite expensive though, but we'll look into that. And I believe the box that comes with an open differential at the back might not be even needed due to the amount of power on this car to get a limited slip diff, but always nice to look into the options, isn't it? Um, also, um, give me your ideas. Do you think there's anything I should do to this car? Let me know. So join me next time when I list out all the issues and problems I have on the car.